Good to see everybody this morning. It's a big day on Capitol Hill, and we have been trying to push the administration to do their job. Let me say this very clearly, as you've heard me say so many times before, and you'll hear me say in the days ahead, the Biden border catastrophe remains the number one priority of the House Republicans. We have fought for this every single day. We will continue to fight for border security every single day. And today is a big day to bring some accountability. Um, it's a very important time in history, as has been noted here around the world, but certainly here as well. And we're all witnessing that, that we live in an increasingly dangerous world. And our enemies are growing increasingly hostile abroad, and they're trying to exploit our borders here at home. The administration has made that very easy to exploit. In fact, they put out the welcome mat, as we all know. And for the last uh, nearly four years, we've seen Secretary Mayorkas willfully cede operational control of our border to drug cartels. We've seen exploding numbers of terrorists being encountered at the border. We've seen uh, gang members and people with criminal backgrounds be released into our country. We've seen fentanyl flood over the border, and it's now become, as we all know, the leading cause of deaths for Americans age 18 to 49. It feels like almost every day we hear another story now of violence committed against innocent Americans, some illegal alien who commits a violent act, assaults, brutalizes, or even murders uh, an American. We're, we're hearing about um, illegal aliens getting, getting busted for trafficking drugs in, our, in our, even our small towns. And Secretary Mayorkas has invited this catastrophe into our cities and our states, and he is responsible for the heartache of so many families across this country. He and Joe Biden engineered this catastrophe. They allowed it. They apparently desired it. And now we're all living with the uh, results of it. He has repeatedly violated the public trust in a way that no previous cabinet secretary in the history of the United States has. And he has willfully defied federal immigration laws, willfully defied the will of Congress, the bipartisan will of Congress, bipartisan laws that were enacted before he took office and since. And after the House transmits the articles of impeachment to the Senate later today, we expect and we demand that all 100 senators listen to the arguments of the House impeachment managers. They have a constitutional and institutional obligation to do so. If Senator Schumer cares at all about the suffering of Americans and the disaster that Mayorkas has wrought at the border, then he will hold a full and public trial. The American people want a full and public trial. I think they deserve to see the evidence, and it will be unconscionable, and I, in my view, unconstitutional if Chuck Schumer fails in that responsibility. We have fought every single day to secure the border. The accountability for Secretary Mayorkas is a long time coming, but obviously there's much, much more to do. We passed H.R. 2, as everybody knows, a long time ago, and it had all the key provisions to secure that border. We, we say H.R. 2 as if everybody understands what it is, but some Americans may not. What did we do in that bill? Very important things. We would, we would restore the Remain in Mexico policy that the previous administration under Donald Trump used to, to secure the border. We would end the catch and release policy that President Obama first installed and Joe Biden uh, reenacted. We would end the abuses of the parole system and the, uh, the abuses of, of our, our asylum uh, process and systems that has allowed all of this flood of people into our country and even these dangerous criminals. We, we also would rebuild parts of the wall because, if we, as we've shown in Texas and demonstrated elsewhere, that's a critical deterrent to people crossing illegally. That was H.R. 2. We sent it to the Senate, and it has been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk ever since. Since that time, we passed resolutions in favor of the border. We'll continue, the House Republicans will continue to push all of this legislation through the House and use every ounce of leverage that we have to get control of the border. I have begged and pleaded and demanded that the President use his executive authority that he clearly has under law. Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act that now everybody knows by heart allows the President full discretion to close the border entirely, to shut it down if he deems it to be in the nation's interest. For goodness sakes, if this is not the time where it's in the nation's interest, we don't know when it would be. FBI Director Chris Ray's testified multiple times on the Hill and most recently here just several days ago that all the lights are blinking. We expect and anticipate a terrorist attack on the homeland because we've allowed over 340 persons, suspects on the terrorist watch list, they were apprehended at the border, but we've allowed many of their compatriots, none of us knows how many, to come through unevaded or to be in those groups of gotaways. We know that there are uh, single adult men, which is the vast majority of the people in, in some of these sectors that have come in. When we took uh, 
40 or 64 Republicans to the, uh, to the Eagle Pass sector, uh, the Del Rio sector, back on January, January 3rd, largest congressional trip ever. They told us that 60 to 70 percent of the crossings at that border at that time were single adult males of military age and capability. What are they plotting? What are they planning? Where are they? What small town are they encamped in? We have no idea, but we anticipate the worst. We pray for the best. We pray that all these fears are not realized, but this is a serious, serious thing to the American people. And so I, uh, I, I put out a, uh, a preliminary plan, uh, as you all know, on these, these uh, measures to handle these, these matters from Israel to Ukraine to uh, the Indo-Pacific region. And the fourth bill in this package would be our priorities, which is the Repo Act, and we implement the loan concept and all of this in the supplemental uh, discussion. Uh, but th the will of this of our body is to find every possible way using this legislation and every legislation that we pass to try to use as leverage to get the administration to get control of that border. The American people demand it. The American people deserve it. We're going to continue those discussions today um, about the, the bill. Um, it's in draft form. It's not been released yet because they're still working it out. We have lots of ideas on the table, and we'll be uh, we'll be doing that in earnest and. Um, and I'll take a few questions. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker what, is, what is your response to Republicans who say this move should cost you your job and that if you don't resign, they will try to oust you? Uh, I am not resigning, and it is, um, it is, in my view, an absurd notion that someone would bring a vacate motion when we are simply here trying to do our jobs. Um, it is not helpful to the cause. It is not helpful to the country. It has not helped. The House Republicans advance our agenda, which is in the best interest of the American people here, a secure border, uh, sound governance, uh, and it's not helpful to the unity that we have in, in the body. Look, we have, a, we have a very important mission here. Our mission is very clear. The reason most of us, I can speak for the House Republicans, the reason every House Republican ran for Congress is that they, they, because they wanted to come here and help to save this beleaguered republic of ours. We want to save the country. We believe that we're in an existential moment. We really do. This is a civilizational moment. It's a, uh, it, it's a moment where we're going to decide in this election cycle which vision we have for the country. See, we believe, and you all have heard me say before, we believe in the founding principles, the foundations of America, things like individual freedom and limited government and the rule of law and peace through strength and fiscal responsibility and free markets and human dignity, the foundation, all the anchor points, that, that make us the exceptional nation that we are. And, and right now we're in, a, we're in a, a political struggle, a battle, between a completely different vision for the country. We, we have colleagues in the Congress who envision for us not those things. They have disdain for those things I just listed. They instead envision that America should be remade in the form of some sort of, you know, European-style socialist utopia. That is a dangerous fool's errand. That is a road to Marxism, communism, you know, socialism. That's a step towards those eventualities, and that is not who we are as a country. And so for us to accomplish our mission, which is to save the republic, we need to add more Republicans to the House and grow the House majority so we have more votes. We need to, we need to win back the Republican majority in the Senate, and we need to restore Donald, Donald J. Trump to the White House as our nominee. I believe all those things will happen. But we have to we have to have a united front, and we have to have our members work together. Mr. And we'll be we'll be working today uh, to do that very thing. Um, look, we are in we are in unprecedented times. Okay, um, we're in dangerous times, as has been articulated here around the world and here at home. We need steady leadership. We need steady hands at the wheel. I, look, I regard myself as a as a wartime speaker. I mean, in a literal sense, we are. I knew that when I took the gavel. I didn't anticipate that this would be an easy path. Former Speaker Newt Gingrich posted a couple days ago on his social media that um, this is the hardest challenge that's faced a speaker probably in the history of the country, in the moment that we're in right now. He said arguably uh, maybe comparable to the Civil War, but maybe worse. A single vote margin at a difficult time when the nation is terribly divided. The way we get through that is we show unity and we explain how we have answers to all these great challenges. We have those answers. We shouldn't get in the way of ourselves. Mr. Mr. We're going to work this out today, and we'll have a lot more comment for you today, um, uh, for you later. But um, I'm going to tell you that I am not concerned about this. I am going to do my job, and I think that's what the American people. Is there any upside to calling their bluff, Mr. Speaker? 